Yo, what's good everybody? It's Pablo and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of the Pelicans Rebuild. And before we get started, definitely leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Definitely appreciate all the support I get to the series. Uh, but going back to the series, the Pelicans right now are 8-6. and six, And in this uh, fifth episode, we're going to be playing against the Boston Celtics, a fully healthy Boston Celtics, uh, who people think are really going to be scary next year. So um, this is the year that we're anticipating in real life. So let's see how they're playing on the game. Um, I changed up the lineup. I moved Drew to the one to guard Kyrie. And then I also moved Etuan Moore back to his natural position at the two. And then I put Mo Harkless in because we're playing against a very high powered, smart offense. So Darius Miller is just way too off on, on uh, defense for me to start him versus this team. So I went ahead and put Mo Harkless in the game. This is his first start of the season. Um, I don't anticipate this will be permanent. But um, Darius Miller just leaves too much to be desired on defense. The dude uh, has to really work on his game um, as far as that aspect goes. But Kyrie Irving is averaging 20.5 so far on the season. And then also, if you take a look, you see Drew Holiday is actually averaging 22 and 7. So he's having a very solid co-star season um, with Anthony Davis here in New Orleans. Although they're only two games above 500, but we're taking a look at the Boston Celtics team. If you're catching it, uh, they didn't really add too much. They only added Kyle LeQuinn, uh, but they, of course, get Gordon Hayward back, which is like a free agency signing pretty much because he got hurt on opening night last season. And then on top of that, they get Kyrie Irving back, which is huge for this team, even though they're not sure if he's committed to the team long term. But in my opinion, if I'm Kyrie Irving, I definitely want to resign with this team and make a run for the Eastern Conference Finals each year because I think this is his best situation to do it. He has a good coach, a bunch of good young players around him. So, I mean, I don't see why he would leave to go somewhere like New York or uh, some of the other places that he's rumored to be interested in signing. I think, like I said, Boston is his best situation or his best chance at doing that in the East at least. But going back to the Pelicans and this series, um, I have a few things to talk about before I get into the actual gameplay. But do keep an eye on that because the Pelicans are up by 11 right now trying to build an early lead for the Celtics who are trying to come into the Smoothie King Center and get a W on the road. Uh, but the first thing I have to talk about, number one, is that um, Nico Miritich is on the trading block. Uh, that does not necessarily mean I'm going to trade him, but I am looking to trade him for a point guard so that way we can move Trey Burke to the bench uh, because of how one-sided his game is or one-dimensional his game is. I definitely feel like he's a good scorer but I would definitely prefer his game off of the bench being that spark and uh, bringing life to the bench when Anthony Davis is off of the floor. Um, and then we have a facilitator for when Anthony Davis is on the floor because one of the main reasons I feel like we succeeded in the postseason versus the Blazers last year was because we had a floor general like Rondo. So I would like to see us get something like that. And because Miritich is so inconsistent, I won't have a problem trading him. But at the same time, I won't have a problem keeping him around and possibly re-signing him if I can get equal value. Uh, so definitely leave a comment with your trade suggestions. Uh, don't leave anything outlandish, of course. We're going for realism, so uh, think about a guard that the Pelicans may try to get in real life or someone that makes sense for this team um, because, like I said, I feel more comfortable having Drew play off the ball and then moving Trey Burke to the bench. So that's my opinion, but even though in this game, Drew Holiday has 9-7 and seven at halftime, so he's playing very well at the point guard, at least in this game. But this isn't anything that I think is permanent. But the uh, Pelicans are up by 5 points in this game and have pretty much led throughout the game. So this is definitely something that is surprising. Uh, Gordon Hayward is not playing too well right now. You see he's cold right now, so uh, that definitely will play a factor. But he gets a steal there. Kyrie Irving is back in transition finds Jalen Brown for the slam and one so he's going to the line so these young players are playing very well uh, like I said they're trying to make it a game as Jalen Brown gets another slam uh, but the second thing I wanted to talk about uh, before we fully get into this gameplay is that the next episode will be versus the Golden State Warriors so you'll see uh, Boogie Cousins we are now in December so it's semi-realistic he could be back he wants to be back by training camp 
camp if you have zero doubt but um we'll see uh but he'll be in the next episode that'll be interesting and a very good game but then after that which is my point i'm gonna have a league update video uh you guys are gonna see how the other teams are doing in the league i'm gonna show you guys standings all-star votes this is going to be around mid-season and that's the episode where you guys will probably see me make a trade so definitely leave the trade suggestions there in the comments and it doesn't have to involve nico so definitely leave some comments and let me know what trades you guys want to see in this series but jason tatum is trying to bring his team back they've cut it to an eight point deficit trey burke is cutting into the lane ajinsa steps in for the long two and that is a nice shot nice play ajinsa and we're trying to get his value up because we'll be looking to unload his awful contract at the deadline as well but a nasty step back by uncle drew there and they are only down by five points gordon hayward will miss the shot anthony davis in transition and slams it down so we're up by seven and the crowd is actually going wild and uh, we're trying to put this team away in front of our home team and mo harkless who is having himself a very good game slams it down and here's anthony davis with a turnaround jump shot trying to put away the celtics but Jason Tatum, like I said, he's trying to bring his team back. He gets the steal and slams it in transition. We're up by five with about two minutes and 45. There's Jalen Brown knocking down a three. So now we're only up by two points. Anthony Davis with an and one. And of course, he went to the line and knocked down the free throw. Now the Pelicans are going to be up by five points with a little over two minutes left by a score of 104 to 99. Mo Harkless clear lane to the basket, easy lay-in. The Celtics are really going to have to tighten up their defense if they want to win this game. And here is Kyrie Irving wide open off the screen, and he cuts the lead down to four points. They have the ball back with 40 seconds left, and all of a sudden, this is a very, very good game coming down to the wire. Jalen Brown pull up from mid range he will miss the shot that could have potentially brought it to two and they're gonna foul anthony davis he goes to the line and converts the free throws and that will be enough to take care of the boston celtics who really came surging back in the fourth quarter the pelicans led all game pretty much as i was talking about the topics uh, regarding the my league and uh the boston celtics like i said they never went away they came back there at the end Cut it to two points at one point, and then Anthony Davis took over, and uh, he ends up with 28-13, a block on 10 for 13. Mo Harkless having 22 points, 17 from Trey Burke again, and then Drew Holiday pitched in 14 points and 15 assists, which undoubtedly helped the offense. Um, but the Pelicans move to 9-6 and six on the season, so they are playing very well. They take out an Eastern Conference foe. And the Boston Celtics, who were 9-4 and four at the time. So this is a confidence booster for this team. But in the next episode, I'm playing against the Marcus Cousins and the Golden State Warriors and all the All-Stars they have. Uh, this is the first time Boogie will be returning to the Big Easy since signing with the Golden State Warriors. So there will definitely be some revenge in the air um, that night. So you guys definitely don't want to miss that episode. I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys don't want to miss it. Leave a like, share with your friends, subscribe if you're new, and have a good one.